Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Maybe you saw that last week I uploaded a cover video of Driving Home for Christmas. And basically I played it on the violin and I combined it with a completely new backing track that I produced from scratch. <laughs> Uh, so my vision for this performance video was to take my favourite Christmas song, which is Driving Home for Christmas, but to change the genre a little bit. Uh, so I wanted to go for something that sounds a bit like Vangelis, you know, has got sort of 80s uh, cyberpunk slash Blade Runner kind of retro futurism vibes, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. But I still wanted it to sound Christmassy, so I decided to go for sort of like an ambient sound, a symphonic sound that's combined with these warm analog synth timbres. And to do that I used three main components. First of all uh, my violin which I recorded live as I was performing it, so um, that's my violin recording. Uh, and then I also recorded a bunch of other violin takes in addition to sort of like um, give it a bit more of an interesting arrangement. Uh, then secondly I used the Prophet Ref 2 synth. I used three different sounds from that synth. Uh, and I'm going to break down how I rooted MIDI out of Logic into the sim so I could record in basically the perfect take. And lastly, I am using these play samples. So I'm using various percussive sounds and some more strings which come out of this uh, East-West play edition, which is basically a huge sample library of different sounds that all sound amazing. Um, and then I've also got a bunch of other software instruments, but they are not as key as the three things that I've just mentioned. But I will break down everything in this video, so I make sure to watch until the end, and yeah. So in order to record the violin, I'm using a DPA4099 microphone. It's a condenser microphone, it's a clip-on mic that I attach directly to my violin. And I've covered this in a bunch of other videos, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that. But basically I like it because A, it sort of like has quite a directional sound, so it doesn't pick up too much room sound or other sounds that are around me. And at the same time, because it clips onto the violin, I can sort of move around freely. I'm not as restricted as I would be with like a microphone that's fixed to a mic stand. So here inside of Logic, you can see I've got um, this group of different tracks with all the violin recordings in it. What I've done on all these takes, and I've done this on sort of the over bus as well, is I've kind of rolled off the low end. Um, I did a bit more on this overall bus where I've kind of taken out a notch here which sounded a little bit sharp to my ears. I've rolled up the very very high end just because there was quite a lot of noise from my bowl. Um, and then I've also got some delays, I've got a bit of tuning on it as well. Uh, a bit of compression so that you know there's some very quiet bits and some very loud bits and so that the quiet bits don't get drowned out. Um, I just put some compression on it. Uh, as you can see here. And I've done more or less the same thing for all of the violin takes. I've got a bunch of different takes that I did. So I've got this like little arpeggio, another little arpeggio, and like some kind of, um, you know, harmony as well. Uh, so this is it for the violin. Next up I'm going to talk about the Prophet Ref 2 which is a beautiful synth and I've got three different sounds that I'm using from it. So there's several reasons for why you might like to um, send your MIDI out of Logic into your synth instead of just playing directly on the synth. First of all, you might find that you are not the best keys player in the world. I certainly find that, you know, I'm not going to be quite as on time as if I just, you know, send some MIDI out. But also it keeps my hands free, so what it allows me to do is that I can actually play with some sound design parameters on the synth as I'm recording it back in, uh, which is quite nice. It's not very difficult, so for example for this sound, uh, you'll just use this uh, external instrument. So inside of Logic, under Utility, you've got the external instrument, you just set it to stereo. 
Um, and inside of that, you are basically using your audio device. It's currently not finding it because I'm routing the audio out of logic into kind of uh, something else that I can actually record. But uh, this is my sound card that I normally use. And it just means that the MIDI out of my sound card, I can then route into the synth and the synth picks it up and it will play all of the notes. And then essentially what I'm doing is I'm then recording the synth back into the computer. Uh, so the first sound that I'm using is uh, this Vangelis sound and uh, it's a really great sound. <laughs> So it's called Los Vangelis, it's just one of the preset sounds and I think it's beautiful. Uh, and what I did as I was recording it back in is I just played with the cutoff to get kind of like a bit of variation in the vibe throughout the piece. And you can actually see that here in the recording that you can see in the waveform that some bits are a little bit fatter and some bits not so much, just to give it some dynamics. So for example, in this bit here, there isn't very much happening. You know, it's a quiet little bit, it's the bridge part. Everything is very small and contained. And then gradually it's opening up. And then you have like this big key moment. And I love to do this thing where I record synths into my computer and I do a lot with modulation. It just gives it so much more life and so much more density than if I did everything on the exact same setting. So for me, that's kind of the key reason why I root MIDI out of my computer into the synth and then record it back in. So I just plug the audio outputs out of the synth into my sound card and I record it back in. Uh, so what I found was in the context of this piece, I love this sound, but uh, the onsets of each of the notes to me were a little bit soft, but I also didn't want to change the sound. I just decided to layer it with another sound. So what I did is I just layered it with this UVI workstation um, kind of sound, which is called Poly Machine. It's part of the Wave Runner pack. Um, if you don't know UVI workstation, it's basically a sample library for lots of retro synths, lots of iconic synths that's really difficult to get your hands on. Uh, and yeah, I just put it on really quietly. You can see it's quiet in the mix, but it just gives it a tiny bit more attack. That's with, that's without. And the MIDI that you can see, this is actually the MIDI that, um, I also sent out to the Prophet Ref 2 as well. Um, so the way I did this, the way I figured it out is I uh, downloaded a MIDI file for the song and uh, then I decided to change it completely. So especially in the chorus, um, I made the chords a little bit darker, a little bit more dramatic, basically. Um, the original is quite bluesy and light, but I wanted to have that kind of Vangelis darker quality, so. So that's it, and that's my Vangelis sound from The Prophet. The next sound that I'm going to go into is this sound called Chariots. Uh, so the cool thing about this sound called Chariots is that um, it's actually a split keyboard sound. It's got two completely different sounds on the two sides of this keyboard. So back down here, it's got sort of like a monophonic bass sound and then at the top, it's got this like very bright, vibrant sort of um, polyphonic sound, which is uh, really nice if you want to play a bass and some chords at the same time. So 
So inside of Logic though, I uh, recorded the two parts, the bass part and the top part of that sound onto two separate tracks because uh, that way I was able to sort of mix it a bit differently. Um, so this is the bass sound. And I did exactly the same thing that I do for all of the sounds, which is that when I've played it in, I played with the filter cut off to create a bit of variation. Um, personally, for my song, I felt like the low end of that sound was just a tiny bit muddy. So what I did is I rolled off the bass end uh, and instead replaced it with this digital soft synth uh, called Spire. Uh, and I used the bass out of there and uh, put that in instead. To me, that just sounded a little bit cleaner in the context of this mix. Then I decided to just have this small little section uh, with a sound called Rutger Lead. It doesn't really play much in this piece, but I just thought it sounded really lovely and detuned and it has this real kind of eerie quality that I love so much in retro sci-fi movies. <laughs> The last thing that I haven't really talked about that much yet is my uh, play samples, so the East-West play samples. Um, I'm using some strings, first of all. So um, the East-West strings are beautiful. They actually are, you know, real string recordings. They're great, but still with any MIDI instrument or any sampler instrument, especially strings, it's very hard to get them to sound realistic. But because in my case, I've blended it in with all of these violin recordings, it sort of just gels fine as it is. <laughs> So this is like a chamber ensemble sound uh, that I used here. And then I also used a couple of other east-west sounds. So I've got this earthquake ensemble, um, which just plays sort of like a bit of a beat. quite quiet in the mix it just gives it a bit more oomph and then I've got these uh, various metals as well and it just adds a little bit of sparkle on top of the song and that's basically my production in a nutshell uh, and you can see that I mixed it a bit. I didn't do overly much. It was mainly kind of EQ compression, a couple of delays. And then I put it into a different project and I masked it a little bit in Ozone. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen the full performance yet, I will link it down below so you can check it out. If you want to see more production breakdowns, tutorials about performing electronic music live, more violin covers, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!